Hey everybody, um, so real quick I want to show you a pretty cool thing. I, I've worked with this package before, um, so you may have seen this on my channel uh, in, in a previous video, um, but what I'm doing here is working with Selenium, and that's a Python package that allows us to interact with a uh, web uh, browser so we're able to you know go to Google open up BIM 360 and then uh, interact with BIM 360 to maybe do a specific thing like download a uh, Revit file or something um, so in this example that's kind of what I'm doing uh, except for I'm not downloading a file what I'll be doing is pulling down uh, the data inside of uh, there's there's a data so if you if you're familiar with BIM 360 and you have admin rights to BIM 360 there is a uh, in the account admin portion of it there is a inside of the insight tab there is a data tab that allows you to download a lot of the overall the overall data of the platform so all your users all of your uh, projects um, and just a lot of stuff like that so you could download it and we have some folks within the firm that are leveraging that data to uh, visualize and to manage BIM 360 and so uh, I just want to show you how to do that uh, um, through through Selenium because it's it's a kind of a tedious process to have to do that because you do have to wait 15 minutes or 20 minutes for it to actually process everything and then you get a um, uh, an email I, I'm, I'm not totally sure if you always get an email uh, but I know you do uh, have to wait and then you finally can download it and I can show you that window real quick Um, so this is what it looks like um, so I am in the uh, admin portion I jumped over to insight so you can see here and I went to data and then from there I can click on um, download and then it just or I mean process it's it then starts the processing and then after that's finished, you get a link like this where you have the date when it was created and then you have a download button. Um, so you can, um, you know, uh, you, you have to, to go out here, press that button, wait, and then download it. Uh, and then rename the folder if you need to do that or, or whatever else and so you can, as you can imagine that could be quite tedious and if you're working with data um, you know those folks uh, I mean I would imagine if you're watching this channel uh, manually doing it would not be something that you would typically want to do so this uh, this script though it's very very simple and I kind of did it the quick way and I'm gonna have to fix a few things which I haven't done yet um, but I, I thought it would be cool to show you um, so this here it's, it kind of starts here so this opens up the website so it uses a driver you do have to download that driver um, I downloaded a Google driver and it has to be a specific version uh, I would recommend reading the selenium uh, documentation to figure that out but it's pretty simple after you download that just make sure that it um, is in the the right location of wherever your um, uh, um, uh, Jupyter notebook is, uh, or you could also repath the directory as well. Um, so let's just go ahead and run through this and we'll see what happens. So you can see here, uh, this opened and it's opening up that window. So the first thing it wants is the email. I'm gonna try to fit these on the screen. All right, so we've got the email. So now all we gotta do is um, move down here. And then if I just do uh, shift enter, it'll run that email. Now it's looking for a password. And so the password works in the exact same way, but since this is uh, my actual account, I won't, uh, I won't actually show that portion of it. I'm just going to uh, paste in my uh, my password for now. 
but as you could imagine um, you just you just put that in there and then you run this and it inputs it just like the email inputs it in and then it, it, it clicks enter all right and so the next part of it is clicking on the net I'm not totally sure what this is called here uh, but I called it navigation drop down so if we run that it'll drop that down what we're trying to click on is the um, is the account admin so if we uh, do shift con uh, um, shift enter uh, it clicks on the account admin and then um, the next part is clicking the navigation drop down again and just making sure that we click on uh, insight and so it does that And then what we want to do is go over to the data tab. And so now we're back at the data tab and you can see that this is finishing, uh, finished processing. So we can actually uh, download that. Um, but first, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to want to uh, come out here and click the run extraction. Um, and that should be this one here. So you can see it's running the extraction now, which I'm going to update this to reflect that. And then this, all this does here is it refreshes the window. So you can see it, it refreshes it. And I do that because I wasn't sure if um, when it's while it's processing, if it'll actually um, update. So this will I'm going to set this to run maybe like 30 minutes after because the idea is that I'm going to have a script sitting on like a server or something that'll run this. Um, but it'll it'll wait 30 minutes, refresh the window and then jump down to the next um, parts which is just downloading um, if you're familiar with uh, selenium and interacting with websites then you probably have seen that I'm using the XPath, which is the very simple and easy way to to interact with a website I have a an example where I, I interact with Inkscape and um, and we're doing a, a few extra things there and I'm not uh, I, I in that case where I couldn't find an element to grab onto I would use the XPath but um, usually uh, XPath is the last thing you want to do because if anything changes in the site um, you immediately have issues and you have to redo it um, and so you can see in this case this XPath is pointing at a specific element and that element is uh, this one so it's just gonna every time I run this it's gonna download the de December 17th uh, um, data and uh, that's you know I don't need that so instead of using XPath I've got to use a different um, um, thing I've got to use maybe a specific tag for for the latest elements or the latest download so I got to figure out how to do that um, it shouldn't be too difficult but that's something I'm gonna add to this I can't necessarily share this script but I hope this gives you an idea um, of what I'm trying to do and, and 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 show you how easy it is to do and set up yourself so if you want to do something like this where you want to create something really quickly um, I think this is an awesome tool and I definitely recommend checking it out because it's really really easy to set this stuff up um, so I guess if you do uh, jump into this and you give selenium a try um, let me know if you have questions or let me know if you have any trouble um, and you know definitely feel free to to share your experience with me I'd love to know how you're you're using uh, um, selenium and, and python to to automate your workflows and, and feel free to check out some of the past videos I don't know how good they were they were a while ago when I created them uh, but that may give you some other examples as well on how to use 
um, this uh, this tool. So, and I think there's some other um, fantastic tools. You could also use like a, um, a UI flow to interact with websites. I think uh, I haven't tried that, but I think you can create something like that. Um, or something like uh, what we've done in this example with UI flow, or maybe even with Microsoft um, Power Automate, you could try that. And then there's also, I think Google has something called Google Puppeteer that may allow you to do stuff like this. So there's a lot of options, so definitely check those out and see if they're, they're a better fit for you. But anyways, that's what I've got so far. Um, I uh, will see you in the next video, and thanks a lot for watching.